Hey y'all, how you doing today? All right. Um, got a lot going on today. A uh, lot to do. Which explains why you haven't seen a video from me in a little while. Um, plenty of work going on here. It's, it's been crazy. Um, just trying to get a whole lot of stuff done. Um, a lot of work going on on the house and you know just you know lots of not a lot a lot of remodeling but there's quite a bit of remodeling there that's keeping me really really super busy so uh enough with the excuses all right i had a viewer who asked me a question about the piston and rod orientation um, first of all, in most of the time, what you want to do is you want to make sure and use some sort of marking system. Okay. That is preferable. That's the preferred way to make sure that you're keeping track of everything. Okay. Now. If you don't have that, if you have, there are many different ways to do that though, okay? I mean, let me give you some examples. Um, paint markers. I mean, it's not perfect, but if you want to keep track of your piston and rods, you know, after you take them out of the engine, this is the best way to do it. Okay, I'm not going to call the guy out because I'm not, that's not what this channel is about. I'm not going to shame him and uh, all of that kind of crap, you know, and, and throw a lot of hate his way. That's just, that's beneath me. Okay, so, anyway. And, um, you know, that's kind of childish too. I mean, all right. This particular viewer, though, he took his, took his engine apart. And he had everything in line and organized. And then through a set of circumstances, things got kind of disorganized. Okay. So, like I said, paint marker, uh, even, uh, you know, what? you could probably even use some sort of other kind of marker too as well. Um, Here's one little marking system that I've always loved, and I've loved these for like, been using these a long time. I love these. These are made by Caterpillar. It's a 6V7939 tape tool. Uh, these are beautiful. I love these, especially when I'm taking off like maybe a carburetor or a throttle body or something like that, you know, that has a lot of vacuum hoses and electrical connectors and stuff like that. You can mark them all with this and mark where they come off of with this. So it's pretty neat. Okay, enough diverging though. Traditionally, you would stamp, flip this around, you would stamp the uh, connecting rod and piston assembly. You would stamp it with some sort of mark here on the pad, traditionally. Okay, that is the traditional method that you would use. Let me try to get this box open with these, st <laughs> these stamps in it because they're being difficult. Okay, now here we go. Got got them open as you can see there's all kinds of numbers and letters and everything else this is a cheap set from like harbor freight um you can get them i think this is from harbor freight yeah i'm pretty sure this is from harbor freight you can get them also uh from a lot of other tool companies as well don't have that but you still want to stamp a mark on here you know you just take oh boy Okay, now here we go. Let's see. Uh, one. Okay, 
Now I'm not going to stamp this particular connecting rod because that is not going back in an engine. But I will stamp a piece of metal to give you an idea of how this works exactly. Here we go. All right, thin piece of sheet metal, but I think it'll do the job. Okay, it'll illustrate the purposes of what I want to do here really, really well. So, all right, we got number one. We need to put number one on here. There we go, number one. Okay, pretty, pretty simple. Okay, now, there is other ways, though. Now, let's say you don't have a punch set, but you do have some punches. And you still want to mark them with something more than, say, more permanent than, say, your, your, a paint marker. Okay. There we go. There's one way you can put, like, you know, this, this was number one. You put one punch, you know, bang, you know, if this was number one, you put, you know, you'd hammer in, you know, one punch on there and that would be okay. One punch. All right. Now, sometimes the manufacturers, in this case, Chrysler, will mark the piston and rod assembly. This is number five. Okay. That is a big help. All right. The viewer who, who commented this, who asked this question, he, uh, his engine is of similar vintage to this. This is like late eighties. His is early nineties, like uh, non-magnum it's LA. So like similar to this. So as you can see, we've got number five on here. If my camera will focus. So, all right. Now, however, let's say you clean everything. Okay. I'm seeing a little faint mark on this one right here. I don't know if you can see it or not. There's a little faint mark there. Almost looks like a four, but, or an A, but you know, it's very faint. Now, let's say you clean the connecting rod and you come up with stuff like this, you know, or stuff like that, the Maltese cross, which means that that connecting rod assembly has been remanufactured by Chrysler. Okay, let's say you come up with that sort of thing. You know, you're looking at them um, and you come up with something like that. Okay. What do you do? What do you go? How do you go about fixing this? Well, there is some things to help you out. Okay. First of all, this one, if you notice, there's this notch cut in the rod cap right there. Okay. That notch, what it's for, it's to allow oil to the rod bearing that goes in here will have a notch in it too as well. It is to allow oil, as you can see, this one here has that notch. Whoops, sorry about that. But you can see that notch right there. Okay, that is to allow oil to come out of the rod cap. As you can see, right there it is on the other side. Now, what should we do with that? How do we use that? Well, it's actually very simple. Now, let's say you've had your rod cap apart and everything else, and you still don't know where everything goes. Your rod cap goes. Look at the witness mark there on the connecting rod. See that little clear line right there? That clear little line right there. All right, that means that goes on, you know. This goes on like so. Okay? All right. Now, where does that face, though? How does that help us? very very simple that these marks that notch right there in the rod cap that faces inside towards the engine okay that faces the inside of the engine this does not face outside this does not face the outside of the block okay so
oh wait a minute i got the oil pan on this i was going to take that off and show you but i forgot i had the oil pan on that my my sorry sorry about that but this will face the inside of the engine okay so let's say let's say our crank is sit this is attached to the crankshaft okay so this will face to the inside of the engine okay so our, let's say the front of the engine's up here the back the flywheel is back here our home balancer is back here up here so this will face to this side the inside of the engine now it will not face that way okay so the reason why they do this is so not for you to keep track of everything but it's to lubricate the cam and the lifters okay it helps lubricate the cam and the lifters the, the cam and the lifters do have their own lubrication system but this is a nice way to help keep that lubricated okay nice little bit of oil control there isn't there okay right along with these holes in the pistons too see right there where the wrist pins are now let's see can we see oh yeah see there's that mark on this rod right here see that darker spot right there that's where the oil has been coming through and lubricating the inside of the engine you know there's just a little bit that squirts out of there under pressure you know from the oil pump and everything and it just comes out and squirts on like the bottom of the cam and the bottom of the lifters just a little bit not much just a little but it's just enough to keep everything help keep everything lubricated just that much more along with its pressurized lubrication that the cam and the lifters get now that helps you out a little bit what's another thing whoop sorry about that this right here see that notch that notch this is a factory piston by the way that notch which is on one side only it's not on that side it's on this side this faces towards the front of the engine okay so that means this would be with this notch where's our rod cap okay see here's our notch see trying to get my camera see there's the notch where the notch goes there's the witness marks for it anyway our notch on our rod cap look at there there we go goes right down on there so that means this if our harmonic balancer is up here remember and our flywheel is back here that means this is going to be that means this is going to be the uh okay i'm thinking with the engine upside down That means this is going to be, with, with it right side up, that means this is going to be on the driver's side. Okay? So, there we go. That will help you some. Alright? Now, this one, this notch being over here, that means it being rotated up like that, that means this is going to be on the passenger side. Alright, so that helps you out a little bit. That at least gets you out of the woods a little bit. But, let's say you want something, you need a little bit more information. Well, what do we do? Okay, let's think about it for just a minute. We're going to need, if we're going and we're going to go, we're going to polish the crankshaft, and we went and we've, like, got new bearings on the rods, we got new bearings on the crank, on the mains. We've got new, uh, we've honed the cylinders. We've got new rings and everything like that. Technically, these guys can go pretty much anywhere. Technically. Okay, so I'm not telling you, hey, take your rods and pistons and swap them around or any which way you want to. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. But I am telling you this. If you have a situation where, like our viewer has, where he has went and he has swapped, he has pulled his rod and piston assemblies out of his engine, and he doesn't know where they go back, because he's laid them out, but he hasn't marked them, 
or at least I'm assuming he hasn't marked them. Now, usually it's pretty important to not mess these up. But if we're talking new piston rings, which your piston rings is what touches the cylinder walls, honed cylinders or cylinders that have been uh, bored and honed, and let's say you've got new pistons and new piston rings, and you've got new bearings, you've got, uh, you even went so far as maybe have the rods reconditioned, you maybe even went so far as to have the crank turned and all of that sort of stuff, or maybe a new crankshaft, then technically you could pretty much put these anywhere. One more thing though to note, okay, about these connecting rods and their placement, their orientation. Now, you'll notice this rod looks pretty much the same on both sides. This cap looks pretty much the same on both sides, but it isn't completely. I'll show you why. One side has got this little taper right there. See that little taper? This guy's got a, this side's got a little bit of a taper too. The rod here has got this machine taper on it as well. This side doesn't have as much taper. Now we know our cap goes there like that. Okay? We know that. But let's just go over here and get a, another connecting rod at random. Okay. Grabbed another one. Let's see. I've marked this one here. I've got two dots on it, you know, bang, bang right there that I put on there. So that indicates to me that that is a number two, number two cylinder. Now, let's put, pull these off right here. Now this has got the bearing, rod bearing, old rod bearing still in it, so. Okay, see how the rod bearing is located? It's located over to one side right here. This is the side that's probably going to be that's probably going to be closest to the cheek of the crank here, okay? Now, I would strongly, 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 strongly suggest that if you're going to be doing anything like this, if you're going to be taking art, I don't care who's the manufacturer or anything, do yourself a huge favor, okay? Do yourself a big, big favor and do this. Get yourself some manuals, okay? You know, these or the high performance manuals, the Mopar performance manuals, anything like that will help you out so, so much. I cannot stress that stuff enough. You know, do yourself a huge favor, okay? So, check with the manuals, okay? Watch my video, learn from it. Hopefully, hopefully, you can get, you can steer yourself out of this little mess, okay? Now, um, however, do not feel bad about this. Do not beat yourself up about this because everybody makes mistakes, okay? everybody it's called human nature okay so all right okay so i thank you very much for watching thank you thank you thank you so much for subscribing and asking questions and the thumbs ups and the likes and all of that stuff i really really and the shares too thank you thank you so much for all of that huge big thing for me um uh, you continue to put your trust in me, and I'm going to continue to put, to try and put out the best videos I can possibly put out. If I have any more information about this to glean, to put out into a video, I will as soon as humanly possible. So, if you have any other questions about any of these videos, just be sure to put them out there, put your questions out there, and I will do my best to answer them, okay? Thank you very much, and God bless.